The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. that I forgot to make and that is a we're going to have a women's ministry retreat and revival it will be April the 28th through the 29th it is at 1734 South 350 East Charlotte Park in Marion Indiana and those ladies who are going to be there we need to know how many of you are going to go we have six we have six at this time okay very good all right, we hope that all of you can make it. It'll be a great time for the ladies. All right. Okay, Wes, if you'd like to stand, if you can, sing with us.
1834 South 350 East Charlotte Park in Marion, Indiana. Those ladies who are going to be there, we need to know how many of you are going to go. We have six. We have six at this time. Okay, very good. All right. We hope that all of you can make it. It'll be a great time for the ladies. All right. Okay, Wes. If you'd like to stand, if you can, sing with us. A delayed reaction. Yeah, I have that quite a bit. <laughs> when we get older, we have those moments. Okay, Wes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Restarts, so we have a technical difficulty there. We just want to be encouraged to have a daily walk with the Lord and just re remember and realize what we don't understand is we are truly following the Lord. We don't realize what God can actually do for us if we allow Him to. If we don't tie His hands by making decisions without consulting God. Because He is our guide, He is the way, the truth, and the life that we should be living. And we're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. Only God is perfect. Not in this life. We'll never be perfect. We'll stumble, but God will be there to pick us up. And so will our other brothers and sisters. Along the way, if we see a brother or sister stumbling, we need to come to them in love and understanding and help them get back on track again. Ready, Wes? Yeah. Don't forget the fish timer. This is not our song. This is not our music. But we appreciate those who have written this music to give God glory and give praises to Him. Amen? Amen. Your love defends me. Your love 
do this. There's no way I can make this work. But God, he finds a way when there is no way. Amen. As we are faithful to God, he is faithful to us. God has the ability to touch people's hearts in a way that we can't understand. And the things of this world that are materialistic to us, when God speaks to us, no longer matter. Whether it be money, whether it be things that we have, we see others in need. But when Christ is in our heart, those things that we think we hold valuable are no longer valuable. And we're able to give them up for others to help them. But only God can help you do that. For man is built in a way that sometimes is very selfish and self-serving. But God, as the Holy Spirit, penetrates your heart and your mind. He is able to give us joy when we give things away that we thought were precious to us. But we receive joy when we give those to others who receive the joy from the gift. But today, we come to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. It's a small amount that God requires. But yet God gives us back in abundance, overflowing, something we can't even contain. But that's God's way. So today, Lord, we pray for this blessing on this offering. We pray, Father, that you will multiply it. We pray that you will use it for the kingdom, Lord, to glorify you and to help others, Lord, and help us to spread the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Psalm says, no man would stand before God's throne. They would dare. For his glory would bring you to your knees. The love that would shine out from him would be overcoming us. It would just, like the song says, I can only imagine to stand in his presence. But in his presence, our love for him and his love for us would bring us to our knees in worship. And we would cast down those crowns that he has given us.
But David, again, is a man, just like you and me. He has faults, but God looks beyond those faults, and he sees your heart. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and hear me. For I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am holy, and you are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Because be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant. Here David's asking God, fill my soul with joy. Rejoice my soul. He's asking, plead in the Lord. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready. I get that God is ready always to forgive. Now I want you to remember that. He's always ready to forgive no matter the circumstance, no matter the crime. Your heart is right and it's repent of God is ready to forgive. And you are of abundant mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you. David's emphasizing, I will call upon you, Lord, in the day of my trouble. <coughs> but God is there again, always ready. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works? All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. There is no other God. There's only one. Teach me the way, O Lord. I will walk in the truth. Can we do that? Can we walk in the truth? Unite my heart to fear your name. Unite my heart to fear your name. That is not the kind of fear that you're scared of. That is the fear of not being able to meet the expectations of someone you love. You're afraid you might fail. That love that David had for God, he did not want to bring disgrace to him. That's the kind of fear that he's talking about. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forevermore. For great is your mercy towards me. God's mercy abounds on each and every one of us. He extends the same mercy to everyone. Everyone has that opportunity to serve God. And in forgiveness and repentance, God is faithful and trust and forgive us. If you have delivered my soul from the depths of Shiloh, O oh God, the proud have risen against me. And the mob of violent men have sought my life. have not said you before them. But you, O oh Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious. A God compassionate beyond our understanding. Long-suffering and abundant in mercy and in truth. O oh, turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign for good that those who hate me, those who hate me, may see it and be ashamed of it. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Amen? Amen. Now here's David 
a man after God's own heart, a man who has served God, he's praying up now to be protected. Now, there's two places you can go with this. I'm going to go to the latter part of it. When David was supposed to become the king, and Saul take Saul's place, Saul had troops going after him. And men were hating him. But God protected him through all of that. God heard his prayer. And he will hear your prayers as well. I'm going to turn to the book of 1 Samuel. Now I know I have 8 to 119, but I'll just I'll take a, a part of chapter 7 just for a moment. And I'm going to go to 7, verse 3. Then Samuel spoke to the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods. You have to understand, Israel, the, country, the, the nation of Israel had fallen back to worshiping false gods. They, would, they still had God, but they were doing, they were also following false gods because they seen the others and he thought they were prospering because they had many gods. But they, that was not the case. But God, at this time, has directed Samuel to speak to the nation of Israel to bring them back to him. Because there's, in Scripture, God says, they will be my people and I will be their God. But they have fallen away at this time. Well, Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, if you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods. And from among the people, be prepared your hearts for the Lord. And serve Him only. I said before, we can't serve two sides of the fence. We can't serve two lords. Two masters cannot be served. Whether we be self-serving, or serving ourselves, we're serving God. So if we become self-serving, we're not going to serve God. Everything is going to be for about us. Nothing will be about God. And at this time, the Philistines had a lot going on with the nation of Israel. Israel, so they kind of were taking things over there. So from among you. And be prepared your hearts for the Lord and serve him only. For he will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away Balas and Ashloss, if I said that correct, and served the Lord. Those were the two other gods they were serving. And so they would serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all of Israel to Massaph. Nisoph, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said, they said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel the judge judged the children of Israel at Mespar. Now when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together in Mizpah, the lords, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us that he may save us from the hands of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now as Samuel 
was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so confused them that they were overcome for Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mespah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as far as Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mespar and Shen and called its name Eben Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. Now I'm going to go, I just want to give you a little outline of what was going on there. So at this time God has kept his promise. The prophet Samuel has sacrificed a baby lamb to the Lord which was pleasing to him. So with a loud thunder God spoke down, confused the Philistines. They took off running and the Israelites went after them and they conquered them. You might think, well, what's that got to do with it? But follow me. I'll put it all together for you. Now it came to pass when Samuel was old. Now we're in years later. And there's some stuff going on that's not pleasing to God. Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made the, his sons judges over Israel. Now these are the sons of Samuel. And so you know that Samuel raised those children up properly. But yet, you got to remember, we're human. We can be swayed. We see things that we want. If we're not following God, we're not attached to him, we're going to be pulled away from him. So here you have Samuel, in my opinion, was probably one of the greatest servants of God. He had children who he raised up in the way of the Lord. I know he did. But he made his two sons judges over Israel. The name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second was Abijah. They were judges in Bersibia. Said that right. But his sons did not walk in the ways they turned aside. So they didn't walk in the way that his father, their father, had walked with the Lord. After dishonest gain, they took bribes. Here we are. We're, we're starting to serve ourselves. We're taking bribes. We're looking the other way. No one else is seeing this, but God knows this. And they perverted justice. So they made it work for themselves. Then all the elders of Israel <coughs> gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramiah and said to him, Look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. You gotta remember Samuel was the judge over Israel and a prophet of God. Now make us a king to judge us like all other nations. Now you got to remember, the house of Israel was God's people. And he was always there to protect them and take care of them. And always fulfilled and kept that promise. But now they have these two sons that are not walking the way of the Lord. And the people are displeased with that. So they come to Samuel and they said, we want a king. We want a man. We want something we can put our hands on and be accountable for. But this thing that they spoke of displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not, for they have not rejected you, 
But they have rejected me, their God, that I should not reign over them. Because there again, you got to go back. Samuel, I'm going to repeat myself again, was the judge over the nation of Israel, but also a prophet of God. So everything that he judged, everything that he decided was done through prayer that he got from God to give to the people. And then the sons, they became people away from God. They were able to be bribed, swayed, to make injustice decisions, where Samuel was straightforward and never did anything like that. So now the people come to him and they want a king. And God says, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day I have brought them out of Egypt. God was faithful, took them out of captivity, took them, to, took them out of Egypt, took care of them all the time. Even in this day with which you have forsaken me and served other gods, so they do, so you are doing the same thing also. Now, therefore, heed their voice, God speaking to Samuel. However, you should solemnly forewarn them, God solemnly forewarn them. Show them the behavior of a king who will reign over them. Now, you no longer have God, God full of compassion and love and mercy. Now you have a man who's going to be set forth on his own goals. I believe this is what God's telling him. So Samuel told them the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of your king. So he's telling them all that's going to happen. You put a man in place of God, these are the things that are going to happen. This king will reign over you. He will take your sons, appoint them for his own chariots, he will, and to his horsemen, and some will run before the chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands of captains, over his fifties will set some to the plow. They will they will plow the ground. They will reap the harvest. Some may be uh, have make weapons of war, equipment of chariot. He will take your daughters and their perfumers, their, your cooks, your bakers, and he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your wines your olives, your groves, and give them to his servants. And he will take your mule servant, your male servants, for female servants of your finest men and women, and your donkeys, and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep, and he will, and you will be his servants. So here we're going to take the place of God. We're going to put a man. Obviously, we know we can't do better. But God is warning them. These are the things that are going to happen when you put a man in my place. The grace, the mercy, the compassion, the love that he has. So the king has the right to take whatever he wants. You got to remember one thing about God. God is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. But he is a servant to his children. As we serve him, he serves us. Kings, men do not serve servants. They are low. They are nothing to them. But God sees us, every one of us, as a child, his child. And he wants to give the best to his children as we give our best back to him. That's the thing we have to understand about God. <coughs> he doesn't look down on us like a peasant. Jesus came and he served people. God served the children of Israel, took care of them, protected them, and they turned their back on him. They wanted to serve a man king, not God the king. You have to ask yourself, 
who would I rather be serving? Am I going to serve this world and all that it holds me to? Or am I going to stand strong in God's word? Now, we all have rules to follow. I'm not saying break the rules. I'm saying God has everything that he wants us to do right here in his word. And if we walk that walk, like Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is truth? At the end of the day, truth never changes. At the end of the day, the lie can be manipulated. But God's word is truth. If we live in the truth, we've got nothing to worry about. Now I'm going to go to Matthew 18, 20. If you want to turn there, you're welcome to do that. Now all that Israel did with the grace and the love of God, he still forgave them. After all he did for them, they turned their back on him. They wanted to go back to worshiping the other gods. They wanted a man to take care of them. But God forewarned him of the misery that could come from that. And he told him that. But God is forgiving, always ready. As David's psalm said, God is always ready to forgive. But man is vindictive. Man is self-serving. Man is self-gaining. Matthew chapter 18, I'm going to start at verse, I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to go to 19, but I had 18 through 20. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So here we are again. We're praying. God's going to take care of it. No matter what we've done in our lives and where we've been, if we have turned our lives over to God, He will be faithful to us. It may not be at that moment that we want it. It may take a little bit of time. But God's not governed by time or space. He has eternity. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So as we gather together in, in, as a congregation in prayer, God is with us. And as we go into our private areas and our homes, driving down the road, at work in a spot where no one else is there, and we're praying to God, He's going to hear that prayer. Because no one else needs to know what you're talking to God about. God knows. But he needs to make conversation with us to, to grow and strengthen our relationship with Christ. Because if you don't talk to somebody, no matter how many times you see them, you can see them every day for your whole life and never say a word to them and say, well, I know that guy. Or do you, have you ever spoke to him? Well, no, but I, I know he's always here. We know God is always here. We know that. Even the non-believers, whether they deny it or not, they know that God is here. But are they having a conversation with him on a daily basis? Are they telling God, I want to follow you. I need you to guide me. I need you to take away this humanistic, self-centered, self-servingness out of my life so I can serve others. And believe me, there's no greater joy than service. Doing something for somebody else and you get that joy that only God can give you for that gift that you've given someone else. And then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And should I forgive him up to seven times? You know, a lot of people, <coughs> we may get hurt by somebody. They may say things to us that hurt us deeply. And sometimes it's out of anger. Sometimes it's out of selfishness. But here Peter's calling to the Lord, how often shall 
my brother sin against me and forgive him up to seven times and Jesus said to him I do not say to you up to seven times but up to seventy seven times therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts of his servants. So, I'm, I'm just going to go over that. This is pretty interesting here. This man that Jesus is talking about right now. And it really is uh, the epitome you forgive me, but I, I'm not going to forgive you. This is what I see in this particular area here. Because he's asking to be forgiven by someone else, something that he owes or he's done. But then he turns right around and goes to these others, but he won't forgive them. And, you know, the Lord tells us if there's not forgiveness in your heart, I cannot forgive you. And therefore, you will never enter heaven. If we carry grudge and hatred towards someone else through our whole life, and we're walking supposedly with God, and we can't force that away and ask God to take that away from us, because we don't want it taken away. We want that, that hate. God will never allow you into heaven. Yeah. He will say to you, leave me, I never do. And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 77 times, forgive that person. Basically, that's what he said, <laughs> forgive them. Because Jesus, we have to look at ourselves and say, what has God forgiven me for? One of the things I've done, and that's between you and God. No one else needs to know that, but Jesus knows it. Therefore, the, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to, the, to settle the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. So a servant had been brought to him. He sends before the king, he owes him this money, and he wants paid. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and that payment be made. So you can go back to where we were earlier, when the people wanted to have a king. Kind of applies. These are the things that a king can do to his, his people that he's ruling over. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion. Okay? So here is a king, a man who has everything, but he had compassion on the servant. He knew he didn't have that kind of money. And he was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him the entire debt. So this man has been forgiven that debt of 10,000 10, talents, which was a lot of money, I'm sure. So we want to flip that up a little bit as we pray to God for forgiveness. We fall before him. He forgives us our sins and our deaths. But the rest of the story. So this man's been forgiven of all that he owes the king. He's got nothing to worry about. His children and his wife are free. He can go on about his life with no opposition from the king. So everything is good. Now this is where it turns around. But that the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. 
and he had laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. Now, this is the guy that's just been forgiven by the king for all his debt. So he had didn't learn anything from that. He was still full of himself. He wanted what he wanted. Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Ooh, that sounds familiar. And he would not forgive him, but went and threw him into prison till he should be paid his debt. So this guy who was forgiven went right out and did exactly the opposite of what he asked the king to do for him. He learned nothing. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that he had done. <coughs> then his master, after he called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you of all your debt because you begged me. Should you not have had compassion on your fellow servant? Should you not have had the same compassion on your fellow servant that I have on you is what he's asking him? Just as I had pity on you, and his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all the debt that he owed him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother for his trespasses. So forgiveness is a very essential part of our spiritual walk. And our dedication, as it's said in the book of Samuel, who we serve. People of Israel wanted to serve a king. They didn't want to serve God. They didn't want to be accountable to God. They wanted to be able to put their hands on somebody, point their fingers at them. And so they, they did this wrong. But God is perfect. He don't make all mistakes. But the people of Israel... They wanted something different because they knew that Samuel was dying. He was old, but he was truly a man of God. He truly served God, and he truly judged the people in a godly way. But when his two sons came in, the people knew right then and there there was injustice, there was selfishness and greed. That they could be bought without a problem. And they knew that that was a danger to Israel. But if they had continued to serve God, God would have taken care of those two. But they were afraid. They thought, well, we need to get a man in here so we can point our fingers and put our hands on him. So I guess if we wanted to sum it up, the sermon today is. Don't just pray to God when you need help. Talk to him every day. And he'll hear you. In the book of Samuel, we hear again, I'm repetitive, but that's the way I am. Um, the people of Israel had everything. It's like I try to emphasize, like maybe I don't say it right, but if we only knew what God was capable of doing for us, we would have everything. Because we are so full of of ourselves, we want it our way. And sometimes we don't want to follow what God has to say for us. We make mistakes. David, the man after all God, God's own heart, made many mistakes, but God still forgave him. And here, you know, we're not talking about a grievance against a person. David sinned against God many times, but God was faithful to forgive him. But Samuel, I have to say, I think, in my opinion, was probably one of the most godliest men that ever served God. 
true to the end. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for today. I pray, Lord, that we will serve you, Lord, in a way that will be pleasing to you. I know, Lord, in our lives as we serve you, we're going to make mistakes. But you are faithful and just to forgive us as we confess those mistakes to you. Not to try to hide them from you or anybody else. Because we can hide nothing from you, Lord. So we pray, Father, that you give us the strength through your Holy Spirit which dwells within us, the Holy Spirit that helps us to become Christ-like, enables us to walk with you, gives us strength and insight and discernment. And help us, Lord, to study your word and keep you consciously in our minds on a daily basis. So, Lord, we pray that prayer and that blessing today over everyone here today everyone else who is listening. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. Though they are undeserved in many cases, you are still faithful, and you are still God, and you are the one who loves us the most and has our best interests at heart. Let us heed your word, and let us be still and know that you are God. Amen? Amen. 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 Warm wishes from all of us at Parkview Health for a happy, healthy holiday season.
man's lips and made him clean and whole. And you can find that in Ezekiel. Or Isaiah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. We're ready for this one. This one you have to stand up if you can, if you want to. I praise God for this event here that we were able to be here today and worship Him and have no fear of being bothered being in God's house today. Ready, Wes? Yep. This is not our music, but I surely thank those who wrote this song to give God praise and glory. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
Lord, you told her a long time ago that she was your daughter. And Father God, sometimes, even though we know that we belong to you, sometimes we don't act as a, a child of God. And Lord God, sometimes situations will cause us to hold on to something that you want us to let go of. So I pray for Mary right now. I know she loves you. I have no doubt in my mind. I pray, God, that you would cleanse her of anything that she has not confessed to you. Lord God, touch her. Help her, Lord God, in every place, everything in her life. Help her, God, to show love and forgiveness, God. When it's hard to do, help her to show it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God, I come to you praying for you, God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for her. Did you do you believe that Jesus Christ was buried and rose again? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, because she has confessed you with her mouth, God, that she knows that you died for her. And I pray, God, that you will touch her in her life in every situation, God. Cleanse her of any bitterness, any hatred. And fill that with love, Father God. Lord, we thank you for her life. We thank you for her obedience to you, God. Help her to continue to grow in you, God. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, hallelujah. You said, suffer all the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Lord, I know that Sire loves you. I know, God, that she has a special place in her heart, Father God, for you. And Lord, you know all the things that's on her little heart and mind, God, that she's going through. And I pray that you heal her, heal her mind, heal her heart, help her to love you more and more every day, God. Lord, you have placed an anointing upon this child, and I know it for a fact. And Lord, I pray that as she grows, that anointing will grow in her. And that the world will see you in her, God. And I give you all the praise, honor, and the glory of sight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. God, I lift up Deb to you right now, Father God. I thank you for her faithfulness in your church. I thank you for all the things that she does for you, God. She is a true servant. Lord God, I pray right now that you will continue to bless her and keep her. Lord, anything that's in her heart and mind that needs, that she needs to let go of, God, you know what it is. Touch her right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father God, I pray for Wes. I pray, God, that you would touch him, Lord. He truly is a servant. Lord God, anything he can do for you, for the kingdom, he's willing to do it. And I pray that you'll be with him. Lord God, touch his body, touch his heart, touch his mind, and keep him, Father God, as he goes off for you, God, to do your will. In Jesus' name I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, I will be sure of your son. I pray, God, that you will continue to touch her, continue to keep her, continue to allow her to grow in you, Father. Lord, you know her heart, you know her mind, you know her needs. And I pray, God, that you will always be with her and show her your love in everything that she does. And Lord, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God, we lift up Mary to you, God. We thank you for her. We thank you for the growth that she is seeing in your world. Lord God, I pray that you continue to bless her and keep her. Lord, she's a dedicated woman. And Lord, I pray right now if there's anything that's not like you that's holding her back in any way, God, we cancel those assignments of the enemy in Jesus' name over her life. Keep her, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we lift the hell up to you. Lord God, 
All I can say is yes and amen to this one. Lord God, he has shown everyone that he's your child. And Lord, I pray that if there's anything that's in his heart, his mind, that's not like you, that you wipe it out. Lord God, help him to continue to grow, continue to show the world what it means to be a Christian. And Lord, we thank you for him. We thank you for his service. We thank you for being a great servant of you, God. And we give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Father God, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Oh, what a faithful son. Oh, God, hallelujah. Lord, you know the mantle that you've placed upon him. Lord God, help him to fulfill it in every day of his life, God. Lord, give him strength, give him courage, give him wisdom, give him faith, above all faith, God. Lord God, let him live for years and years and years doing the work that you have called him to do. And we thank you for him and all that he's doing for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and prevent you faultless for his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. God bless you.
Well, we get together.